Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about natural resources. If you don't know what natural resources are, they're basically everything we find in the world. Sometimes we find things on the surface of the planet like sand and stones and things like that. Sometimes we dig into the earth to find ore and other things that just occur naturally on our planet. There are a number of different kinds of natural resources and different countries have different amounts. Sometimes a country's wealth is determined by the amount of natural resources they have and their ability to get them out of the ground or to extract them or to just find them and sell them to other countries or make things out of them. So, if you're not sure what natural resources are or if you're not sure how to talk about natural resources in English, stick around because I think in this lesson you will learn a number of words and phrases that you can use to talk about natural resources. Natural resources. So, the definition of a natural resource would be not man-made. So, we define things on this planet in a couple of ways. We have things that are natural resources, things that we find, things that just exist in the natural world. Those would be things like sunlight or coal uh, or the soil we grow plants in. The opposite of a natural resource would be something that's man-made. When something is man-made, it makes we it means we take natural resources and we combine them in ways to create new things. So, to put it simply, a tree is a natural resource. A car is not. I wanted to make sure that you knew the difference in pronunciation between these two things because they can sound very similar. Water is a resource but you might go to the track to watch a racehorse. Notice it almost sounds the same, doesn't it? To me, I can clearly distinguish between the two words. We have natural resources but we also have horses that we call racehorses. So, Water is a resource. A horse could be a racehorse. There's a funny skit uh, from Saturday Night Live, I think, where a person confuses those two words. So, I thought I should mention that. We also sometimes refer to natural resources as raw materials. You might be familiar with the word raw because it is used to talk about food that isn't cooked. Sometimes people go to the store and they buy raw fish. When they take it home, they cook it. But we also use the word raw with the word materials to talk about natural resources. Sometimes when you're um wanting to make something, you need different natural resources in order to make them. So, um raw materials is just another way to talk about natural resources. So, you might need some stone. You might need some Portland cement and you might need some water. Those would be the raw materials that you would use to make cement. By the way, remember I'm not a science teacher. So, sometimes I make mistakes but I think that's how you make cement but you'll have to check. Um let's talk a little bit about some of the actual natural resources. One very common natural resource in the world is coal. We use coal for a number of things. Probably the two biggest uses of coal are for heat and the second are sorry, I lost track there. Two biggest uses for coal either as a um a way to heat our homes and businesses or as a way to generate electricity. Coal is considered a dirty form of energy and the world is trying to move away from using coal as a source of energy. When you burn coal to heat your house or when you burn coal to generate electricity, it creates a lot of pollution. But coal is still readily available. In fact, when I was a kid, the house I lived in had a coal chute on the outside and in the basement, we had a furnace that burned coal. When I was really little, then I remember my parents replaced it with a different kind of furnace. Um by the way, if you're bad Uh, at Christmas, you might get a lump of coal from Santa Claus. That's something that uh, people tell their kids sometimes. We have oil. Right now, we are very much an oil-based economy in the world. Many of us drive vehicles. Many of us need gasoline or diesel fuel in order to fuel our cars. As I mentioned, I heat my house with oil. 
So, oil is very, very important. There are some countries that have a lot of oil. Countries like Saudi Arabia, countries like Canada have lots of oil. In order to get to the oil, you do need to usually drill into the ground though. Oil reserves are usually far underground. We also have something called natural gas. When you drill into the ground in some parts of Canada and in some other countries, you can find natural gas. Natural gas is a very pure form of gas that will burn easily and produces very little pollution if any. So, natural gas is commonly used in Canada for us to heat our homes and to cook. Um it usually burns with a nice little blue flame and there's also lots of natural gas offshore. When a natural resource is found offshore, it means it's found uh below the bottom of the ocean. So, there's lots of natural gas wells in the ocean around lots of countries as well. We also have what are called precious metals. Precious metals are usually not found in their pure form. This is a lump of gold ore and this has gold flakes in it and gold is one of the precious metals. We've decided, human beings have decided that some metals are more valuable than others. Some metals are more precious than others. Gold is one of the most precious metals on the planet because it's very nice to look at and it doesn't change. When you polish gold, it has a nice beautiful color to it. So, we decided thousands of years ago probably that gold was one of the most precious metals. And coming in second place is of course silver. Silver is also a very precious metal. The price of gold is usually higher than the price of silver but when people talk about precious metals, they usually talk about gold and silver. There's no surprise to me then that these are the two most popular metals that we use to make jewelry. Often when you go and buy a ring or when you go and buy a necklace, you buy a gold necklace or you buy a silver necklace. The two most popular uh, ones to use. We also have another kind of precious metal called platinum. Platinum is also used for jewelry. Platinum is very valuable because it doesn't corrode. If you ever look at a car, you'll see that eventually it starts to rust but a metal like platinum, it just stays this way almost all the time. A very cool uh precious metal as well. And then of course, we have what are called gemstones or precious stones. A gemstone is something like a ruby or an opal or a diamond. I think there's something called a garnet. I'm not an expert on gemstones or precious stones but they are certainly another type of natural resource that has a lot of value in the world. Many people in North America, they will they will give their girlfriend uh, a diamond ring as an engagement ring and ask her if she'll marry them. So, that's pretty common in North America. You can also just call them gems. We don't actually say gemstone very often. That's somewhat formal. I think gem would be a, a more common pronunciation. By the way, I'm married to Jen and a diamond is a gem. It's a different letter at the end but uh so here we go. Diamond. So, diamonds are found in some parts of the world. They are somewhat rare. When something is rare, it means there aren't a lot of them. One of the things that makes a natural resource valuable can be its rarity. The fact that there simply aren't very many. Um but diamonds are found in different places uh, in the world. Countries that have diamonds usually have large diamond mines in order to get to the diamonds so that they can sell them. So, there's two things that happen with natural resources. Sometimes you need to import natural resources. There are natural resources your country does not have and so large container ships like this one will bring them to your country. You will import natural resources. If you are in a country with lots of natural resources, you might export natural resources. I tried to find a boat that was sailing away. Canada imports some natural resources and we export other natural resources. Canada imports things like oil from the Middle East. We need oil. Even though we have oil ourselves, we still need oil. 
and we export natural resources like maple syrup. <laughs> we export natural resources like lumber which is wood made from trees uh and we do export a little bit of natural gas to our neighbor to the south, the United States. So, when you import, it means you buy natural resources from another country and they send it to you and when you export, it means you sell natural resources to another country and you send them away. Some natural resources are located in the ground. There are a lot of coal mines in different parts of Canada and the United States because coal is usually located underground. So, men and women will dig into the ground and create a mine. They will have a mine shaft that goes down and in the mine, they will extract the coal or other things that are being mined. You can have gold mines. You can have uh, coal mines. You can have silver mines. Anytime you need to dig into the earth in order to get a natural resource, it's usually called a mine. By the way, just as a joke, this mug is mine. So, the word mine does have a couple different meanings. Sometimes we need to drill and I mentioned this uh earlier in the lesson. Sometimes you need to drill in order to get a natural resource. Usually, we drill for oil. We also drill for natural gas. A drill, a small drill is something you use to put a hole in wood but when you go to get oil or natural gas, you usually use a big drill. This is an oil rig. This is a an oil platform out in the ocean and it will have the ability to drill into the floor of the ocean in order to get uh oil or natural gas. Um yes, the cost for me to drill a natural gas well is about $50,000. So, the reason I don't do it is because I'm not sure it would pay for itself because there might not be very much natural gas there. So, Sometimes you need to extract a natural resource. Um maybe you need something like stone or you need something like sand or you need something like coal and it's close to the surface. We would simply dig it up and we would then use the word extract. So, sometimes you need to extract a natural resource. A lot of natural resources, um things like precious metals uh and things like um gold and silver will come in the form of ore. Um when you make steel, you need to find iron ore. Ore is basically the natural resource you want but it's mixed with other things like rock and other minerals or elements and so, a lot of times you extract the ore and then you need to get the natural resource out of the ore. Many times, you do that using something called a refinery. When you refine something, you take it from one state to the state that you want. Here's a better example. Crude oil comes out of the ground but you need to refine it at a refinery in order to get gasoline or petrol, you might call it in British English. When you get iron ore out of the ground, you need to refine it in order to get the iron out of the iron ore. You need to remove what's called the impurities in order to get the natural resource and we do that at a refinery and the process is called to refine. That's the verb you would use. Sometimes in the case of natural gas uh, or something like oil, there might be a pipeline. A pipeline is just a big pipe that goes for thousands of kilometers. There are some pipelines that go all the way from northern Canada into the United States and we pump natural gas and maybe oil through those pipelines. So, a pipeline Uh, looks like this. It's just a big pipe. If you're wondering what a pipe is, it's just a big tube that you pump stuff through. Um so, I added aluminum uh, as one of the metals just so you would realize that depending on what type of English you're learning, um there's two pronunciations. I say aluminum. Americans say aluminum. In the UK, they say they say aluminum. Maybe I got that wrong but here in Canada, we say aluminum. In Quebec, there are there is a lot of aluminum. It's very easy uh, to find aluminum. It's one of the things that that province exports is aluminum. So, when Quebec exports aluminum to Britain, it leaves as aluminum and when it arrives, it's then called aluminum. 
interesting how there's two pronunciations. So, there are two kinds of natural resources. There is something called a renewable natural resource and non-renewable. I think you understand the difference. There was just a recent uh climate uh meeting where they COP26 where they were trying to decide uh, how to make the planet better and one of the things there was that they suggested we use more renewable resources and less non-renewable. Renewable resources are things like the wind, uh sunlight, um all of those things are renewable. They if you use them, they don't run out, okay? The sun doesn't stop shining if you put solar panels on your roof. But we also have non-renewable uh forms of natural resources. Non-renewable resources would be coal or oil. We know that eventually there will be no more. Uh even things like diamonds are considered non-renewable because it takes thousands and thousands and thousands of years for a diamond to form underground. So, renewable, anything that doesn't diminish as you use it and non-renewable, something that um, where there is a limited supply. One of the um yeah, side effects of getting natural resources is that often it will cause pollution. The process of refining ore creates pollution. The process of extracting things from different areas sometimes ruins the environment there. So, we have to be very careful when we drill or when we mine or when we extract natural resources because it can cause pollution uh, either in the process or in the stages afterwards. So, uh, I think if anything, I wish we would pollute less. I enjoy my blue sky. Uh, I hope that it stays that way for my kids and my grandkids and for thousands of years to come. So, we have something called fossil fuels. This was mentioned a bit earlier in the lesson. Fossil fuels are things like oil that were created underground over a thousands and thousands of years from decaying plant matter basically. So, they are basically fuels created from a layer of organic matter under the soil which eventually became oil and we just call them fossil fuels. We put them in that group uh because we know that fossil fuels are very useful but they also create pollution. When you drive your car, you're polluting a little bit because you're burning a fossil fuel. Um so, fossil fuels again, things like oil. You can see these um barrels are labeled crude oil. That means it's oil straight from the ground. It has not been refined at all. We also have of course, trees. As I mentioned, Canada has a lot of trees. Trees are a natural resource that is also renewable as long as you replant the trees. It takes about 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years for a tree to be uh, big enough to harvest depending on the variety. But Canada definitely struggles with we harvest a lot of trees and then we don't always replant enough. We're always trying to plant more trees. Um and we usually do but um not always. So, it is a renewable resource as long as human beings take the time to replant them. Trees of course, are used to make wood or lumber and all of those things. When I use the word wood, it's a general term for a tree after you've chopped it down. We build our houses out of wood here in Canada. When I use the word lumber, it usually means wood that has been changed into like rectangles and squares. We make it into boards and planks so that you can build things out of it. So, then I would use the word lumber. Where am I at here? Sunlight is a renewable resource. Sunlight is a natural resource that everyone has in the world. Um unless you live in a country where it's very, very cloudy all the time, you should always uh have sunlight. And we can build something called a solar panel which converts sunlight to electricity. Very, very handy. But sunlight, the sun is definitely a renewable form of energy. It is a natural resource that hopefully we can use more and more of as time goes forward because it's very clean in terms of a source of energy. It's a very clean natural resource. And then of course, we have wind. Um you know, the nice thing about the sun is it shines all day. 
The thing about the wind that's a little annoying is it doesn't always blow. So, wind is a great natural resource. It's very clean but sometimes it's not windy and then the wind turbines don't turn. So, that's one of the challenges we have with some of the renewable forms of energy. The renewable natural resources is that they aren't consistent. So, that's something we will have to figure out in the future. So, air can be considered a natural resource. Uh even though we don't really use air directly, air does create the wind. So, wind is moving air but we also sometimes extract things from the air. Um there are things like oxygen. There are things like nitrogen. There are different gases in the air that we use for different things. Recently and during the pandemic, there was a high demand for oxygen. One of the ways to get oxygen You know, don't quote me on this. They might get oxygen from water but they might also extract it from the air. Let's double check that for a sec. Give me a moment here. The air is a natural resource. Where oxygen comes from, you can figure that out later. Um fresh water. So, fresh water is considered a resource for several reasons. One is we need it for drinking. We need water so that we can drink water. Fresh water is also a natural resource because it's often used in the manufacturing process. Lots of um factories need fresh water to maybe cool things down or part of the process or for various other things. So, fresh water generally most big cities are older cities are located really close to fresh water because hundreds of years ago, people needed that water to survive. Stone is a natural resource. We use stone for a variety of things. Everything from building our roads. We use stone when we create cement or concrete to make buildings. We use stone in a simpler way just to build walls or fences. So, stone is probably one of the first natural resources that humans used on this planet. Um a long time ago, someone said, hmm, I could build a house out of this stone. And so, they built a house out of it. But stone is used for a wide variety of things. By the way, when you get stone, um it usually comes from something called a quarry. And near my house, if I drive about an hour, there are two really big stone quarries. Places where they extract stone, where they get bigger stones and they kind of crunch it up into smaller stones called gravel. But stone is definitely a very, very common natural resource. We also have sand. By the way, sand is used for a lot of things you might not be aware of. Sand is used, I think, to make glass. Sand, I think, might have a role in creating computer chips. You'll have to do the research on this but sand, that very, very fine sand that you find at the beach or in the desert, there are many different kinds. Some kinds of sand are considered a valuable natural resource and used for many, many different things. And then, of course, soil. Soil is kind of that natural resource we don't always think of but if we didn't have soil, if we didn't have healthy soil, we wouldn't have food. We need soil in order to grow things. That is the number one job of soil. It is used for us to grow the things that we eat or to grow the things we feed to animals which we eat. And then, we also have flora and fauna. So, flora refers to anything that grows on this planet that has value to us. Okay, it doesn't necessarily have to have value. Let me take that back. Flora is any kind of plant. When you look outside, there is very specific types of flora in your area. Fauna would be all of the animals that live in your area. All of the wild animals. You wouldn't call um for instance, if you have some chickens, you wouldn't call that fauna. But if you go out into the woods or if you walk outside of your city and you see a squirrel or a raccoon or a deer uh, or a lion, if you live in a country that has lions, we would consider all of the natural animals in the world, we would consider them fauna. And those um, would be your two major groups of natural resources of living things. That would be flora and fauna. 